Hi everybody and welcome to another and a final episode of No Tippy Tappy Football brought to you by William Hill. And honestly, right now, I am so excited because I'm genuinely sat in between two of the real legends of this game that we all love so, so much. Of course, as always, the one and only Sam Allardyce. Good morning, how Good are morning. you? Good morning, I'm fine, Natalie. Thank you very much. Looking forward to our last podcast. Unfortunately, our last. It could have been at least one more app, maybe, isn't it, if they if they got through. But there we go. Yes. Wasn't to be. Wasn't to be. So, yes, for our last one, we really have brought in a legend today. Sam, would you like to introduce your friend today? Well, uh, only last week I was down in London when we were sharing our company with the LMA and some of our... Uh, I would associate sponsors and a good, good Dave and Neil, of course, and uh, thank him very much for coming on his busy, busy schedule just before Christmas. So, welcome, Neil. Great thank to you very see much, you. Sam. Yeah, lovely to be here and on a, such a lovely, bloody freezing morning. It's uh, <laughs> great to be here at this time in the morning. I know because we're recording this at eight a.m. It's currently minus seven, eight, nine outside, yeah. something like that. So everybody's done well to get here on time and you're touring yeah. the country at the minute as well, it seems, Neil. So thank you for joining us. No problem, thank you. So I always like to start by asking our guests, how do they know Sam? What's your relationship with Sam? And where? how far do you both go back as as knowing each other? Oh, it's just it's just <laughs> being managers and, you know, we've been managers that long. We, we both have been at Notts County, over yeah. at early doors in our... So we, we both had the same uh, experience there. And uh, and it's just, it, I think managers just have that, don't you? Everybody thinks because you probably shouted to Mont Bench and that, that you don't. But all managers have that respect. I've always had big respect for, for Sam. And, uh, you know, very, un, for me, underrated at, at what he brought to the table. I think he changed a lot of ideas. He, you know, people say about dinosaurs, but you change as things develop. And I thought Sam was ahead of his time at times. You're not the first person to say that. Most of our guests have, have have said that about Sam as well. Um, you always look a little bit humble when people <laughs> yeah, say that yeah, as well, well Sam. Uh, well, uh, I suppose you, when you're doing it, you don't really look, look at it. And I suppose when people start saying it, when you look back at it, you think, well, you know, that era was a massive change and uh, probably helped, helped, hopefully helped change uh, the monitoring and the and the precise things about football to, for the better, which I think everybody does now, like you mean. So, at the time a huge amount to stick. Natalie, twenty eight staff, thirty staff, or well, who needs all that staff? You know what I mean. I was wondering, I'm giving him stick by yeah. the way. <laughs> <laughs> the elders <laughs> need all them for. You know what I mean. So, <laughs> so, but there you go. So, uh, I think that, uh, and it, as as Neil will know, the hardest thing was getting the funds for it. Yeah. Because because football's tight when it comes to. Um, paying the quality staff behind the scenes and to have that many and, and be one of the first like you mean was uh was a great benefit to me as a manager I mean it, it actually it actually made it actually taught me the lads who came in thought it was you know it was all about me me picking them and me managing the club and overseeing the the football side of it from that then but what they had in their experience in their particular departments taught me an awful lot like you mean about and of course, you know, I used to get a bit carried away, you know, thinking thinking I knew everything about physio and strength and conditioning. And hey, let me tell you, though, let me tell you, all that like you mean, so. it's still, when everybody always tells me, you know, they come up to me pre-season, you know, when we're doing the training, running and the fitness guy will come up and say, Gaffer, you know, I, yeah. I've looked at the monitor, they've, they've done enough. I'll say, well, I'm the effing manager, son, all right? <laughs> and I'm going to get two more runs out of them, okay? <laughs> so go back in your box, you know. Oh, I can imagine you two have had some fun together. Um, have you? Is there any sort of standout moments, any games you can think of where perhaps you were both managing? Is there any moments or any oh, stories you could share with us? Well, I think I, I think the first time I came across Neil was, was it Scarborough. I think it might have been some eighty six, eighty seven. Yeah. yeah, but I can't. I can't remember. Because Natalie, bloody hell, 1,603 games. I'm <laughs> seven, 74 years old. I can't remember last week. I've only got, long, I've only last got, time we played him. I've only got 101. Yeah. 1,100. I've only got that song behind him yet. Like, only. Yeah, yeah, only. Yeah. I'll have to get another job. Yeah, but he's only a young lad, isn't he? He's only, he's only a young lad. Do you think he's got more games in him? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That sort of, you know. You, you always say never, and then something crops up that whets your appetite. And there you go. There you go. 
Do, is that might, might that happen to you? Because of, of course you um, announced your retirement in yeah. April. Yeah. But if is there a job out there that would uh, tempt not, you back? Not till the end of February. I only work February, March, April now. Okay. I don't work any other longer months. <laughs> I'm a bit longer than that now. I'm normally about November, December, January, February, March, and yeah. April. Mate. So I get a bit longer than Neil normally. But uh, so uh, I'd like to ask you. I'd like to ask what, what was your what was your fondest club? Do you, you know, Sam, it's so difficult, you know. You've had that I mean, many. I have had that many. I've had, I don't, some, I don't know, 16 or 17. But I, I, when I go back, you know, what I love about them is when I go back to the, I had four playoff final wins promotion. And and, and I remember going back from Wembley, uh, you know, on the bus and all the scarves and that. And the f- fabulous memories. And Scarborough was, I was just starting and we were 50 to 1 to finish bottom of the league. And, and Barnet had all the money. They were like the Manchester United of this world. They were with that everything. Stan Flashman and Barry, Barry Fry. And we, I just took a group, 14 players I signed. Uh, I took about 30-odd players over to Scarborough, told them, this is the Man United of non-league now. You want to come here and, and talk them into it. And, and we just got something special going and f- ended up winning the league. And we should have finished bottom, according to the bookies. Now, so you can't, you know... you. you Whilst there's a Sheffield United was my boyhood club, so obviously I had great memories there. I don't really think there's one. What I like about the promotions of that, the eight promotions, they all have reunions and they all come back. And like me and Sam sat here, you'll just take a break and you'll see them all having a drink and they're just the same. You realise why you got promotion because they've got that camaraderie and that humour. And, 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 and even as I'm talking to you, I've got goose pimples. Are you with me? Yeah. It's that, that's what drives us on and, and why we've been going so long. Building teams like that, because we've never really, I haven't, and I don't think Sam has, we've never had the fortune to go in at a time where you've got unbelievable players and the best players in the world. We've had to make the teams that we've, that we've got success. Build them, you know, make poor players average, Average players feel very good. Good players, great players, you know. And, and that's what I've enjoyed, the man management side. And whatever degrees they get nowadays, managers, to qualify, it's, I'm not bothered whether you're 25 and starting or 74. Man management is still 95% of success. Eerie. No matter what you say, Eerie. isn't it, Sam? Eerie. You man said, you said that in the last no, episode. Absolutely no, absolutely no question about that. You know, I say coaching badges are your driving test. Once you've passed it, you get on with it how you want to, like you mean. And, mm. and obviously, today we need more qualifications than ever before. Um, it's a piece of paper, you know what I mean. And, and, and I think that uh, the, the, I think the difficulty with some like life for youngsters now. Why do all youngsters have to have a degree? Why can't we weigh up their abilities? Mm that are not academic and for, put them in the right direction to become Definitely. what they need to become on what strengths they're based on. And teachers should understand their strengths and base and push them into an area where they're going to find a good living in the world and move and impress mm. themselves rather than everybody going to debt by going to university and a lot failing or a lot actually then saying, well, what am I going to do now? Well, what they're going to do now is they've got a qualification They've got a super degree, but they've got no job. Sam, I've got a media degree, so you're so, literally talking to the right person. Yeah, but you've got a good <laughs> it was, job. It was pointless, is, though. It's, yeah, it was yeah. pointless, you know what I mean? So and You talk about a piece of paper, but, you know, when I watch television now and I see them in the Premier League and Championship and they stood at the side of the dugout with the piece of paper and they're writing stuff down during the game, I think, oh, what are they doing? Are they, is it a shopping list or what? <laughs> I've got to go to Asda after the game. <laughs> I, I just, I mean, if you can't get it all up here, something uh, wrong with you, really. I don't know. This, all these bloody notepads and that, they make me laugh. <laughs> best best I had, Natalie, was it was my my coder upstairs. Or in the, and he used to code the game. So he coded the game like that. So I'd be, well, I'd somebody upstairs myself sometimes on the on the blower um, to the lads shouting at him as usual. And, uh, and I visually... I didn't do it at every club, but it, 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 because I was at Bolton for such a long time, I visually just showed them half time. Ooh. So we used to clip down what, what I wanted to point out in terms of this man's doing too much damage to us, we're not doing that much. So I did like two, two, two minutes, two, one and a half minutes, 
And then it just went, look, you got, this is great. That's crap. Yeah. yeah. Stop doing that. Keep doing that. Is that the sort of thing you're talking about when you say he was ahead of his time? Well, we couldn't, he was all right. He, he got his directors and board yeah. to make to make pay to for him. We, I never had enough money to have that. <laughs> I, it was me and my assistant, and we had to do what we could at half time. Us, but no, that that's what what that's what happens now. I mean, yeah. to, to to think about showing them at half time where you've gone wrong. I mean, that's the idea. That's the best thing you can do because players, if you can talk to them, they never sometimes visualize what they can. To you know, they've got no excuse when they see that you know he's running riot. So you've got to come round there and come, you know and things like that. That's why, yeah, that's why he was above his time, but. He had a hey. He, he made sure his chairman made sure he got his staff there. He did. He did well there. Hey, we've got to talk about one man because the, he, he just mentioned it before. Like you I mean because I don't know whether he thinks the same as me, but it probably what helps us become better managers with experience, which was which was the legendary Derek Pavis, who was yeah. the chairman of Notts County. He was a tough oh. old. Tough old boot, you know what I mean? So a plumber he was, plumber yeah. and heating man yeah. who ended up buying the club and oh, we wow. worked for him. I mean, I was I left Scarborough to go and work for him, me and uh, you know over the years it was funny because when I have a set of player down there, he always had the same phrase. He used to go, and his eyes used to roll, and he used to sit in the play with the I was out there to play a bit anyway. There's only so much meat on the bone. He always said it, didn't he? He said it again. Every player there's on his dog. And I used to say to players before we went before we went in, listen, he'll start talking about he ain't got this and that. And when he says and when he sits back and says there's only so much meat on the bone, don't laugh on that. And I've told you. And I used to kick his the lad's feet as he said it like we used to have a right laugh. But I, I don't know about you, but it was difficult. I, I found out early doors with Derek Pavis that the best way I could get to sign a player, I took him with me to matches. And he, he liked to come in his big Rolls Royce. And I remember going to Northampton once and he had a cricket pitch as we drove in yeah. in his bloody Rolls Royce and we went to see this lad called Dean Thomas, a fabulous lad he was. And, uh, and I thought, I wanted him, I knew I wanted him, but I took Derek, come and have a look at this lad. So, cause we sat down watching and, I, and he made a great tattle one. So I says to him, bloody hell, Derek, what did you think to that tattle? Oh, that was a good tattle, wasn't it, he said. So then we carried on and he heads, he heads the ball. I went, phew, we're not bad in it. What do you think? Now he's good in air, blah. So about six top point. Okay. So on the way home, I'd say, bloody hell, Derek. And he'd remember them. He'd remember that one and that shot and that head. And in the end, I said, what do you think? Oh, I think, yeah, I think we should sign him. You know, that's the only way I could get is his idea. And at times when things were going wrong, he'd said to me, Neil, what what did you think about the system? Or what did you think about that <laughs> so-and-so? And I said, and he used to think, I said, Derek, who, who, who's told you? Where have you come from with this? And it's bloody Gardner. It's Gardner had mentioned it. <laughs> it we're going we're gonna to change everything for his Gardner. <laughs> So you know, so you're, so, so you're man managing the players, but also man managing oh, the, the well, managing owners, up, managing, the chair. I say this a lot, and I'm sure Neil will agree. Managing upstairs is the key element of your success mm. because the relationship you have with managing upstairs, and in this case, he's the boss. He owns the club. You go in the Premier League now. There's no owners there. You don't speak to the owners. You know what I mean? Well, uh, Steve Parrish was the, the mm. probably the last owner I spoke to. On a daily basis, like you mean, which I always found, I always found to be the right way forward for me. When you're speaking to employees like you, those employees have a have an agenda sometimes that may not be the same line as yours, and so you may not get the same response from them. And if you can't go to the owner and they go on your behalf, are they explaining it the right way? And are they saying this is what Sam wants or needs? You know, or are they doing it? You know, more for themselves, and that's always a bit of, bit of a problem with uh, directors of football as such these days. And uh, of course, uh, we have to deal with it because that's what we are, and we're no longer managers; we're coaches. Mm. So our responsibility has been diminished, which I find, um, if I, if my destiny's the more the, my destiny's in my own hands, uh, I think the more success I can bring. But you have to accept that the way forward is not like that now. But I think we've, that's why I think we've had the best time, Natalie and me. Mm. I think the way we have to deal with, like Sam says, 
you do upstairs is more difficult than in that dressing room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, if unless you've been there, that's why I laugh, not laugh at the Frank Lampards and Gerrards and that, but top players yeah. that go into management. I I think wait till you see what's happening because they've never witnessed that part no. they've only had to deal with great players yeah. at that level and all of a sudden you've got a player that can't pass water hey with me everybody said to me at Notts County you know, I'm a long ball merchant but my back four couldn't pass water yeah. they couldn't pass a ball so we, we had to eliminate passing and knock it to strikers and, and because you don't you don't go to a club thinking I'm going to play this way that's my system you go to a club and you look at the players, what you've got, what strengths they've got, and then you build a system around what you've got. You don't do it. The other, everybody thinks you can just take your, I'm going to play five at the back and I'm going to go so-and-so and play five at the back. You can't do that. It's a, You've got to just get the best out of the group you've got. Are you with me? At yeah. Scarborough, I, I signed 17, as I said to you that day, that that week, that year. And I remember signing Cess Pod, my captain, and uh, he was Cess left Pod. Bradford and he was a fabulous player person and I said to him, Cess, I want you to be my captain. I took him over to Scarborough. I said, I want you to be my captain next year, you. And uh, I said, we're going to have some fun. And and I said, what a, what, uh, we, we talk about money in a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do, do, do. We never spoke about money at all. He, he signed a contract, said, you put in what you think. Oh, wow. That would have done now. If I told my chairman that now, he'd have put five quid in it. Or something like that. But Cesspod, <laughs> then it would. Yeah, yeah then it would. Five quid, would it? Cesspod, he said, Pod never asked about money. But what I was going to say to you is, um, I, all the players, I ended up signing three really good centre halves. All right. Because I had to sign as many good players as I could. Yeah. And three of them were centre halves. Yeah. So that's why we built a team with the five at the back. Are you with me? Because we had three mm-hmm. centre halves, Cesspod bombing on, and Neil Thompson, who'd been at SCAB, one of the lads we returned. So it, it fitted in to what we'd signed. So, it, you know, I've always found that's the best way to, to look around what you've got, really. Talking about owners, I don't know if you saw on, on Twitter, on social media this week, Neil, but the Accrington Stanley owner, Andy Holt, said on Twitter that he would prefer if you managed England rather than Gary He's Southgate. a very clever man, if you don't mind me saying. <laughs> Would that would that tempt you out of retirement? I, I don't think that I would uh, get be even considered for that. But uh, I, you know, I do, I do think it's an element of uh, you know of of of, of Gareth's um, team. I think it just needs a tweak, really. I think it does need a, a, a Neil Warnock type coach, if I'm honest. Um, I think everybody's really nice. I think the team's really nice. I think his staff is really nice. You know, too nice. Yeah. Really? Oh, do you think? Do you think that's too nice? It's mm-hmm. always too nice. Yeah, I mean, you know, I know, I know, we have to bring our youngsters, youngsters up and all that. But um, if you don't get toughened up for football, you're not going to survive mm. uh, because it's 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 not just about the ability; it's about everything that needs to go along with the ability mm. to be. To be what you want to be, like you I mean, many many a player in the lower divisions has as much ability and sometimes more than players in the Premier League. What the Premier League players do is their brain is quicker than the others, and they don't know how to use their ability via the the intelligence, football intelligence that they have. Like you I mean, but toughening up is is something that if you didn't have it or you didn't experience it when you get into the first team, then you know. You've got to be able to handle the pressure. You see the effort, you know, like you say about the Accrington chairman. Now, I could go and manage Accrington tomorrow, are you with me? Yep. I'd enjoy that as much as I would at the top end, me. I just love mixing and getting in dressing rooms. And, you know, I mean, I wouldn't have a problem with taking the England job because I've, I've got a room that's named after me at the FA because I go there that often to have disciplinary hearings. <laughs> The Neil Warnock lounge is at the top end of the, of the room. You paid for it. You so I've got my it. own place. I paid, paid for it. Yeah, about paid quarter, for of it yeah. a quarter of a million or something like that, yeah. I think. It finds. So, uh, you know, so they, you know, they wouldn't have a problem dealing with me. But <laughs> when I look back at, at, at some of the, you know, that I had the money, Cluffy should have got the job when I was young. But he yeah. said the wrong thing. He did. He didn't do the right things and didn't say the right things. And so they went for the Mr. Reliable. You were me. And that's... You know, you know, I think sometimes they just miss out on, on that job. Not me, I'm on about Cluffer. Mm-hmm. I would have loved to have seen Brian Clough manage it because he, he was something to me when I started. He was my hero, you know. Oh, yeah. 
What a man. Phenomenal. Do you miss that then, both of you? The kind of the dressing room, the camaraderie with the with the players and the. That's the, the only. That's the only thing I miss. Yeah. I don't miss dealing upstairs. I don't miss uh, having to, you know, you know, to to talk to people that you wouldn't talk to any other time of the, your lifetime. Mm. Um, I don't miss getting stitched up. Um, you know, I mean, I've shook chairman's hands over the years, and it's cost me millions. You know. Um, you know, yeah, I, 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 I tell the story about when I went to Cardiff and, and, and Mehmet Dolman, who's one of the best chairmen I've ever had. Um, we were, he shouted, he, he telephoned me down. I'd had, a, I'd had Bamber and Hoyler waiting in the wings to play sign for me. And I told them, we're going to get a club in July, August. Are you with me? And I spoke to Blackburn and Forrest and places like that. Never materialised and they kept going. In September, these two lads kept ringing me up. Gaffer, we're going to have to pay the bills soon, you know. And I said, keep, just have faith, have faith in me. And then Cardiff rang me and said, I want you to come down and... and Talk to me, remember. So I went, I flew down, I was in, in Scotland and I met him at this gentleman's club and he said, Neil, this is blah, blah, blah. So I said, uh, after about five minutes, like me and Sam talking, I knew I could work with him. You get, you know that, don't you? Yeah, so yeah. When you see somebody and you talk to him, you think, ah, I could work with him. And I said to him, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll take the job, my, my, my. Well, we haven't talked money. I said, no, I'll, I'll have the job. You'll, you'll sort me out that. Well, so can I just go and phone Vincent, he says. So... Uh, yeah, if you want. So I said, sh- I just shook his hand like that. So I said, no, I'll, I'll have the job. So he, he said, I'll, I'll just go and phone Vince. So he went out the room and come back and he said, uh, Vincent says, could you just sign? Could you just sign? He says, Mehmet, I'm a Yorkshireman and I've just shook your hand and that's my signature, I said. And I've told him about two other chairmen that I shook their hand that stitched me up. I said, but they're not Yorkshiremen, so they just do it willy-nilly. But I've shook your hand and that. I said, if you want me to sign something. So I just picked a serviette up and wrote down, I will have the job, Neil Warnock, and give him the serviette. And, and that's uh, that's how it was. Where really. is that serviette now? I he's got it. Can you he's imagine? It. I mean, he's got it framed. He's got, he's got it framed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but that's... That's how I. That's how I used to deal. That's how you used to be in the olden days. You used to, you know, you you have that, that that trust in people. And and the most successful times I've had as a manager, nine out of ten times I've had a great chairman. At Scarborough, a di- little bit different. I had three chairmen in two years. I was the first manager that gave chairman a vote of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was. Uh... I love the idea as well that you were taking. You know, you've you've got a bit of a reputation for taking players with you. Is it Paddy Kenny that you've? Have you had Paddy Kenny at five clubs? Five, yeah, probably. Yeah, when I took him to, um, is he off the nightness? It was. Night a, it, it was a, it what? Is he off the nightness? I don't he remember was at, that. He was. Oh, at, he was at. Uh, at he was at Bradford Park Avenue, and I went to watch him. And a chunky little lad he were, um, but I loved him. He mouthed off. He shouted to his defenders and. And he come and he would brave as a lion. And I'd only watched about half an hour. And I said, yeah, we'll have him. So we went and and and, um, and we signed him at Bury. And he came over and uh, I said, listen, I'm gonna, I want you to have more experience, Paddy, than Bradford now. So I'm going to send you on loan. So we're, we're a Mugwing gaffer. He says, I said, you're going to whip me, son. Whip me, where's that? I said, up top here, from here, from, you know, up above Scarborough. That's a lovely place. And I remember him about, he, he went for three months, which was the best thing he could do because the man's game up there. And, and, and But he rang me one, uh, I think it was one December or January when it was really cold. Gaffer, he says, any chance of me coming back? He said, it's the coldest place I've ever been to. <laughs> <laughs> but he come back and he was, uh, you know, I mean, I, I've always had good goalies. I've always got good goalies. Going back to Notts County, I had Steve Cherry and, and, and I've had Francis at Huddersfield and loads of others. But I could never sign strikers. Could you no. not? Oh, we're bad with strikers, uh-huh. so, mate. Uh-huh. Bloody hell. You got half looking. of it right then, because I, 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 was, I was always, well, everybody should know in football, they've heard about that much. You always look at your goal scorer and your goalkeeper, your first two, two you players, do. and you, you, you improve those two if you need to as quickly as you possibly can. Perhaps a goalkeeper is easier to find, but but the front man is uh, is not not as easy. But uh, yeah. you know. And then, I mean, all goalies think they're strikers, by the way. If you're actually on, <laughs> I mean, in the five They like to play yeah. out front there. They, do, don't yeah. they? Yeah. they, they do, always yeah. want to go up front, don't they? Yeah, they you do. Know? And just just to think of David play James, after. that when he played up front. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. when I was at, when I was at Scarborough, Kevin Blackwell. Well, that's when I first signed Kevin, who worked with me as my assistant for many years. Kevin was a goalkeeper. 
and he'd come on board. And yeah, when we got promotion, went to Spain, you know, for the for a celebration. Like really, we took a, we had a fabulous bus then that they used to make in Scarborough, and uh, so we used to we, we'll take it we'll take you down to the to Spain, any yeah. So we we went to down there and uh, we played the Spanish team. Well, one of the team had, had glasses as thick as that. They were like Benny Hill glasses. Well, you won't remember Benny Hill. <laughs> but they had glasses like this. He had it on a string. One of the, that was a striker in this striker game. Striker with glasses. So we were we weren't doing so well. And this Stuart Mel, we trained like hell to score at striker. So I says to uh, I think it was, I don't remember the side. Paul Evans, it were my old mate. And I says to Paul, Paul, come on, let's let's substitute. Um, we'll substitute the goal scorer, the top goal scorer, Stuart Mel. I said, what are you going to do? What are you going to put up front? I said, I'm going to put Blackie up front because he's the goalkeeper. I said, because he always says what a striker he is, doesn't he? <laughs> right, so we, we substituted Stuart Mel and put Blackie up front. Well, Stuart Mel would absolutely destroy a goalkeeper taking his play. <laughs> so Blackie goes in and scored that trick. In 45 minutes, he scored that trick. Well, I've never heard it. Every year, every time I see him now, and for the last 25 years, he's, he brings it up every time. Can you remember that, you know, that substitution you made in Spain, Gaffer, and all that, you know? <laughs> but he did, he scored, you know, good, decent goals with it all, actually. But they all think they, they all think they're gifted. I mean, nowadays, when you look at the games now, they're all passing, they're all playing at the back, aren't they? I think one of them will nutmeg somebody soon. Because they, they all they think... They have to be good passes now, don't oh. they? We do have to be good passers. We like to keep us on our toes as well. I'm a City fan, so whenever I watch Edison, my heart's well, in my he's mouth. One, he's constantly. one of the best passers in the league. Oh, he is. Uh, yeah, he's long, phenomenal. Long and short. He's, yeah. he's incredible, left he's, foot. He says he's the best penalty taker at the club as well, so yeah. I wonder well, if we'll, we'll ever see well, him. Well, but, but you know, taking him then, because <laughs> how many penalties has City well, missed this year? Well, Sam. They've all yeah. had a go, haven't they? I know. So, it, I, I, I'm loving hearing your stories together, and I can imagine when you get together privately as well, there's some cracking stories. If you were going to sit around a table and you were going to bring in some other managers, let's say two or three managers, to sit down and just have a private dinner with, who would you both be bringing along? Well, I was I was always bringing Sir Alex, like you mean, so... I would, so. if I want, I'd be kicking him under the table, mate, <laughs> you know what after, I mean? after what he did to me. But that's another subject. He's a good good manager. But I felt let down by Alex at okay. times. So, but I will not go into that today. You'll have to go on my podcast here about that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good plug. <laughs> and would you have them? Uh, no, I'd have Cluffy. And oh, obviously, yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd have Cluffy. I, I had two luncheons with him. And I've, I've never been um, mesmerised like. He was just amazing. And Derek, Derek Pabis. Yeah. He used to be a forest and director, they, didn't and he? he? And he tried to get Cluffy out. I know. So, so Cluffy hated him. So Cluffy, we, we, when we got success and we got promotion, he said to me that one of the Adam, how you've got promotion working for that? I was like, oh, oh, I never know. And and they had a they had a training ground like to die for at that time, Forest, and we had a little little over the I don't know whether you still had that just over the bridge a little a little five aside pitch. Oh yeah, they still had that, but that was the, for the. The kids, was that the kids? kids? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so we used to train on this little bit, and he used to walk across Cluffy in the morning with Alan Hill and his black Labrador, and he used to walk across and stop on our pitch. He didn't used to go round. <laughs> oh no, not Cluffy. He used to walk across and stop, and he looked across at, and looked at what we were doing. We had pads on, kicking shit out of each other, and he'd just go like this, like that, and just carry on walking to <laughs> to, to his to his, thing. you know. But he he some of the things he said when we were uh, he was amazing to listen to as a young manager. Yeah, though. he was. Yeah. And and like you say, you would have pick Alex and some top man. I mean, what Sam did, and what, when I say he was before his time, Wenger was the next. Wenger to me changed every everybody's outlook because nobody had heard of Wenger. Who the hell's David Dean bringing in here? Wenger, I never heard of him, but he changed a lot. Of, a lot of outlook did 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 Wenger, you know. And it's uh, so over the time. I, ca I can't remember who you'd have some funny wise. Are you with me? I know that you're Alex and that. Well, the... managers wise, funny wise. Well, we had Ian Holloway on the podcast. Holly's good, him, yeah, yeah, but you can't understand Holly, can you? How could you have him on? <laughs> you couldn't have him at dinner, could you? You'd have to keep kicking him under. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, Holly? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I but, love I love the idea of you, Wenger, Alex Ferguson, Sam, and Ian Holloway all sat around. I feel like that's going to yeah, get very, yeah. very feisty yeah. and interesting. But yeah, listen, when you when you have arguments and you, you you fall out with people and what have you, but you you basically at the end end of a game, it's all gone. 
It's like me, some of my youth, I mean, my daughter looks at some of my YouTube club clippings, you know, she phoned me a, a while ago when she was at, at, uh, at uh, well, she's at a hospital now, she's a radiotherapist. And um, she phoned me to say they were using some of my clippings for a bit of motivational thing that morning. So I said, was it bleeped, darling? She went, no, dad, it wasn't bleeped, you know. So I said, I'm sorry, darling. I said, but that, that's how it was, isn't it? You know, you, you, mm. you just get, you do get carried away at times when you're, when you're a manager. But when I used to give my players a rollicking, especially that one you've seen at 96 minute when Les got scored and Morgan should have been marking him and I got let rip in that, in that place. But I go out and do the press and when I come back in, it's gone. I've never been yeah. one. I had a manager, Jim Eiley, who, when he shouted at you, he didn't talk to you for a week or two weeks. Right. And, and you'd walk down the tunnel and you'd look to say hello to him and he'd look away. You know, whereas I would, as soon as I've done press, I come back in, the lads know it's gone then. Mm -hmm. So although <laughs> yeah. they all used to try not to attract my eyes, just after the game, they always <laughs> looking around him. Because once I got his eyes, I'd kill him. The funniest <laughs> manager ever, without any question of a doubt, was called Rasputin the Mad Monk. He named himself that. Who is he? John McGrath. Oh, John. John McGrath was... It was a the good lad, wasn't it? Oh. It was full of it. When oh. his one story, Natalie John yeah. McGrath said to me when I was, this is when I was first early doors starting up, and I'm talking about directors and that and and the football game. How how you're always near the sack, and he said, Neil, let me tell you. He said when I went to Port Vale, he said an old man who'd been there fifty years. I said, where's my office to so and so? Can you? He said, and he said, come follow me, gaffer, and he walked down this damp tunnel. And he turned right and he went round this other one and the, the wind was howling down the tunnel around another two bends and he come to this door. And on the door, at the side, there was a blackboard. And on the blackboard, it wrote, manager. <laughs> and it was in chalk. And everybody laughed like that. And he said, no, that wasn't the funny bit. He said it was the wet effing sponge at the side that we <laughs> John McGrath. John McGrath. <laughs> it was a wet sponge at the side. He said, that's how precarious. Football management is oh, it's also legendary because there were metaphors, like you mean, and uh, and some of the younger lads, because I went there in my thirties, some of the younger lads were looking be bewildered. He came in one day and we were playing, uh, the, the, we were playing in the fourth division, and uh, we played on the AstroTurf at the time. And he came in and he's and he's, oh, he got it. John's like, got it. He's, All right, lads, isn't it like? So he goes today, lads. Today, we're going to be fishermen. And what we're going to do, he says, we're going to get our rod. He said, then we're going to put the float on, put the hook on. We're going to get the maggots. And he said, then we're going to cast it into the river. And we're going to wait. And wait. And when the float starts bobbing, we wait even longer. He says, and then the float goes under. He said, just snatch it, and bash him on the head. <laughs> and all the lads are going. And he walks out. So the kids, what's he going on about? I said, we're playing counter-attacking football, you daft bugger. <laughs> That's what we're doing. And it was his team it, talk. Yeah. I love these conversations. We never know where they're going to go. Like, they just yeah. they just go down well, you crazy just think fast. You're, you're, I love it. When you ask the question... Yeah. Our memories go somewhere else, don't they? <laughs> yeah, they do, I. Yeah, we back don't with, answer the back with another answer. Answer. Yeah. I love it, though. I love it. Well, I'm going to pull you on a, a completely different direction <coughs> again. We're going to just move away from football for a minute and just ask Neil about your social media, Neil, because you've been a bit of a social media star. What made you decide to join Twitter? I just, listen, I, I can't even turn a phone on, right? So when they started asking me about... Will you do, can we do Twitter? Can we do Twitter? Said, yeah, I said, well, my, my daughter, obviously, they, Amy and William, my son, um, uh, from uh, now, they, they look at Twitter and all that. Go on, Dad, have a go, Dad. And some, so I said, all right, we'll have a trial. And I remember uh, uh, Steve, who looks after me, he, we, I were in Scotland, and it was when the drought was on and all that. And he said, will you do a bit of a video? And I said, what, what do you want me to do? I said, I'm on my bike. I love biking. I'm on electric electric bikes. Okay. But me and Sharon go out on electric bikes. We love it. And so I said, all right. And so I did a, I did a thing on the, on the bike, just driving up with my helmet on. And I said, you know, make sure you get stay dehydrated and drink plenty of water and all that. Are you with me? 
And he rings me about four hours later, Stephen says it's had 2.5 million <laughs> hits. I thought, how sad are, how sad what? are people? <laughs> what, on your electric bike? <laughs> yeah. yeah, how well. sad are people? So, it, you know, it's a, I think I did one last night in front of the Man United. I saying, loved it. Have you seen it? Yeah, did he say, I can't tell you where I am yeah. with all traffic the, the interview background. went well. Yeah. Man United <laughs> behind me. <laughs> and I liked you one when you were standing in front of the cannon. Oh, yeah, 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 in Plymouth. Yeah, that's when right. you said still in, still in the firing line. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Well, the thing is, they, they come up with what they want to say. I mean, people, obviously, people, I couldn't do it, but yeah. they do it. But I'll tell them what I want to... I, I, so I change it so it, it's my humour. Are yeah. you with me? So people know it's me. So I, I do I do enjoy that. I don't go on regular. You know, I just... I've enjoyed my podcast. I've, yeah. I have really enjoyed my podcast. And, and I've enjoyed the shows that I've done, the evening withs and going back to my stories. And, and I'll have things planned and I'll have somebody, I've had David Prutton and a few other people helping me do that. And and yet I've then moved on and somebody will ask you a question and I'll talk about Ferguson or somebody else. And before I know where I am, I'm into another story, what's come back, yeah. which I hadn't planned. And they, yeah. they always come back, don't they, they Sam? Do, yeah. Your memories, it just yeah. tweaks your memories, that's all. And, and it's... Uh, so I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed Twitter. I never thought I'd enjoy Twitter. And, and uh, you know, it, it's one of those things that I can't get my head around when I say something and he says, oh, no, that's too many, too many words. What are you yeah. talking about, too many words? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's know. a limit, yes. <laughs> well, I think fans love the idea that you're sat there kind of thinking... What can I tweet or photoshopping something or, or no? Something just crops up. It just comes up, and and I think, well, if that's that's funny, that yeah, you know, and I, I think you've got to laugh at yourself, haven't you? Really, and I, th- you know, all my my managerial things. I mean, it, I've enjoyed the rapport with the away fans as much as the home fans. Oh yeah, I yeah. mean, me and my staff, we used to have uh, 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 every away game, five of us. We used to have a fiver in each, and you could have. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 or 25 seconds you could have one of those when I walked out when they shouted Who's Neil Warnock's a banker yeah. uh, you, uh, uh, and yeah. the, the winner the winner got the 25 quid it's usually 5 seconds uh, yeah. Yeah. but sometimes it would be 25 <laughs> seconds mm. you know. every game I, every I, game I, yeah. we used to have a, we used to have uh, a little bit uh, Neil Warnock's a banker you know and, I used to have the bet every new club I went to I'd get the media man and say like here's a bet for you. I'll give you and I'll give you 100 quid. Right. You give me 10 quid. And if it takes more than a minute to ask what style of football I'm going to play. <laughs> yeah. And they go, what? I said, like, well, if it goes, goes over 10 seconds, like, I mean, yeah. I'll give you 100 quid. Yeah. If it goes under 10, you give me 10 quid. Yeah, all right. Like, I mean, well, I've always got the 10 quid. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because all, you always go, and you look at the journals and go, no. Where, what what are you talking about? What I, 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 surely you're better than that. I went for one you're job. Better than I, that. I went you know for one I mean? job. It's just there. amazing. It is amazing. Yeah. At Norwich, right? And they sent me a fifty-page dossier to fill in before. And I fifty must have been fifty. <gasps> Forty-five, fifty pages. Who did that at Norwich? With Delia and and uh, and the group. And yeah, I went for this interview, and uh, I never filled it in. By the way. So, you know, so I went for the interview and I sat around the table like this and the uh, old doctor was over here and there, there were about eight, eight people, massive, lovely table. And this, and, the, and the, the guy looked at me, obviously he'd been told and he said, well, Mr. Warner, could you tell us, do you think our fans would like your style of football? He's what Sam's on about, right? So I thought, I, saw, I just took a deep breath and I said, well... And I took a deep breath and I, I looked him in the eyes, him in the eyes, him in the eyes, slowly, all of them round the table. And I got back to this one, right? And I went, yeah, I think they'd love to win football games. Yeah. That's, that's all I said. And I thought to myself under need. the breath, you can forget this job. Well, you're not going to get that <laughs> job, are you? I think Bruce Riak got it then. Bruce Riak got the job then. I thought that's another one gone. <laughs> but yeah, uh, what do you like? Your, your style of play and all that, do you think? And I think to myself, you know, it's if you watched Liverpool in the heyday when they had Rushy and Daglish and what have you, they did more long balls I played than what Bolton did, Wonders did. I played hey, against, I played but because against. it's Sam Allardyce and that's Liverpool, you know, there's a way, there's a there's a time and a place. Now, 
I wish there were some long balls because I look at teams losing now in the 90, 85, 80 minutes, 85 minutes, and there's five minutes to go and they get a free kick in their own half, just on the halfway line, and it ends up going back to the goalkeeper. Yeah. When Why not put the centre-halves in the box and put it in the box when you're losing a game with five minutes to go? I, I don't think that's all to do with tactics, me. That I just can't understand it, never will. So it's, uh, you know, it's... it's. But some, you and Sam knows, and I know, I used to know exactly. I remember at Ipswich... Um, we're one nil down. Ipswich fans always give me some stick. I'm going to do. A, I want to do a show there. I said to Matt, get, <laughs> get one book there. I'm doing one in Portsmouth. I've got one in Portsmouth in May. That's another club. So I thought, right, I want to do one. So we're Ipswich. We're one nil down. So get right. Brazil, and Brazil the, to do it with you. All the fans, Sam. <laughs> all the fans at back at goal are shouting, "War not, war not." What's the score? Are you with me? So I, I goes, one nil, like one nil, and I went, but plenty of time, you know, plenty of time. <laughs> We equalise it ninetieth minute, so we we draw one each, and the, all the fans are behind the goal. So I run and I go, one one, get in there, you know. After and, I bet they loved it. Yeah, and then this ginger head centre half, but I can't remember his name now, come running at me, gonna you know what you, blah blah blah. So I've got any other all all the three or four. So I get so up, up into the press room, and this first question, this journalist, and he says. Well, Neil, you know, do you think you were right putting two fingers up to the fans? Are you with me? All right? I'm, right. I, this is what I did, right? Yeah. So I said, uh, sorry, son, are you, you're you not by any chance from the Daily Mirror, are you? And he, he said, yes, I am. I thought, I thought you were, son. Did you not see what I did? I put one finger up and one finger up. But he, in the report, he put, I put two fingers up to the crowd. Do you know, I had nearly 50 letters from Ipswich fans thanking me. Yeah, for and having, I, I, engaging and exactly having, yeah. saying Neil, we know you didn't mean yeah. anything like that. What was reported? Thank you for that. We love your humour and all that yeah. lot, and I'm, that meant a lot to me. That I've had some yeah. good un- interviews. Me, oh, we know. Well, yeah. <laughs> one of my best. One of my best were at, when I was with Cardiff. <clears throat> Cardiff, we played Bristol City away, and uh, we're winning one nil. And he puts five minutes up, and five minutes has gone. Six minutes has gone. And we get a free kick on. They get a free kick on edge of box on the right on the byline. So they put the the ball in. And it's six minutes gone now, by the way. So and our, our goalie punches it over for a corner kick, right? But it's another. It's all, already a minute. So by the time they take the corner, it's seven minutes. They put the corner in, and the big centre half comes and edits the goal, edits the ball in, and he blows for time at the end. You know the kick off at the time. So I'm furious, you know, and I'm going not just with the referee for the time but us conceding it you know so I give, I go off with the players and I said right you lot I'm going on television now right and I'm going to get fined and you lot are paying my fine do you understand you 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 I don't know how much I'm going to get fined but you lot are going to pay my fine so it goes out and television straight away well Neil you know seventh minute when they scored and it was only five minutes up you must have been I said I, I, I thought the referee was out of order, really. When they scored, when he jumped up and thumped the air, I thought he was out of order. It cost me 12 grand. That. The players paid that. The players all paid for it, chipped it in, so it was good, that. But that's the only time, I think, you know, you just... When they shove a microphone, you know, in your in your mouth straight away, it's it's so difficult to to bite your tongue and what because you've got so many things going through your mind as a manager. So before we move on to the World Cup final, we are a week and a half away for Christmas. So just going completely off topic, I just want to ask you both about your Christmas day. How are you spending it? And what is your what is your ideal Christmas dinner? Sam? What do you want to start with Christmas dinner? Yeah. It's, it's well it's traditional for me. I mean it starts starts with all the all the trimmings on it, the turkey, the pigs in blankets, the stuffing the sprouts, the roast potatoes, um, you know, cranberry sauce. Nice. And... You have Yorkshire pudding or not on uh, Christmas? Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. And then, then it's the gravy. That's you know it. what I mean? The gravy is the top top part of that. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it make, for me, it makes or breaks the Christmas dinner. Oh. The gravy, so... Will you have it in your oh, house? No, there's love gravy. Oh, what's no? Well, I was gravy. actually born in the oh, Midlands, yeah. but uh, you know <laughs> what I mean. But, but oh, no, there's love gravy, and that's that's. And then I am a Christmas pudding man. Okay. Not Classic. there's not too many in my family are, are that. Well, they're not, but yeah. I Christmas pudding with white sauce. Okay. 
Okay. I like um, that traditional classic. I'll pour, oh, a bit, I'll pour a bit of brandy yeah, on it. Of course. Yeah. Light it, you know what I mean? <laughs> pour the crackers. You know what I mean? You know, glass of I don't champagne. Think we don't, I don't think we change much, do we, really? No. I mean, I, 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 don't like, I don't like turkey. Okay. I don't mean I don't like it, but no. my wife, Sharon, she cooks such a lovely chicken. And I love the crispy bits around. So okay. she'll cook two chickens and I'll have all the skin. Crispy skin. I pick all the skin off. Yeah. Oh, I love the crispy skin when she <laughs> she does a brilliant chicken. So I'm like him. I love the sprouts and, and my favourites are parsnips. Oh, I love crispy parsnips. parsnips. Yes. And uh, and uh, and then um, Christmas and the puddings. I love Christmas pudding and I like some crust custard or white custard. But when I, I still try and I tell my kids that when I was a kid. We used to put threepences and sixpences yeah. into the pudding. That's right. Yeah. And you used to think you'd won the pools when you found a sixpence mm. when you were a kid. Mm. Right, World Cup final. Your Christmas dinners both sound um, lovely. Mm. Although I'm a vegetarian, so different to what I'll be. Oh, having. yeah. But yes, yes, yes. Well, you'll be yeah. walnut roast on your meal or something. I know. Um, um, Amy is a bit of a is vegan. Is it, is it she walnut likes roast? Is it? Stuff. Yeah. I'm going to have a Wellington, I think. A yeah. Walnut Wellington. Yeah. Do you know when we go out, me and Amy and I, I'll have a full yeah. fried breakfast in a certain yeah. place near, near nearby. We've got a lovely garden centre. And uh, she'll have the vegan breakfast. Is and I must vegan? admit, it doesn't it do look bad. You should try it, you know. I bet you wouldn't tell the difference. Oh, Don't you yeah. turn yeah. vegan now. I know, I know. It's oh, I'd love it if you old in, it became a vegan. A bit old in tooth for that now. But anyhow, <laughs> go and carry on with the World Cup. Right, the World Cup. So it's the final on Sunday. Mm. Argentina taking on France. Not the final we were hoping for, Sam. But no. um, in terms of the tournament, can we just have a quick word about Lionel Messi? Probably going to be his last tournament. Sensational in the semi-final. Do you think he's player of the tournament? Uh, Griezmann. No doubt. Uh, I've, I've never seen anybody change position and play so well and contribute so much and uh, I think that and it's not it's not the, the thing is about Lionel uh, Mbappe is you remember the genius run and you don't remember anything else so then they get man of the match for the one and, and obviously that, that last run was unbelievable you know and his ability is unbelievable. And he scored some good goals and made some really good passes. But if you talk about overall contribution in the World Cup, Griezmann, Griezmann's been nine out of ten, ten out of ten. Mm -hmm. There's times when, 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 you know, where did we see Lionel Messi when they lost the first game? We didn't. Where, where did, so he's built up slowly mm -hmm. to come into a, into a very good game. You know what I mean? But and obviously Mbappe's. Started bright and dipped away. Mm -hmm. You know, the last two games has been against England, as exactly what I said. If Carl Walker looks after him, we're going to have a great chance of winning. And we did, but we blew it. You know what I mean? So, so that, the, you know, on the, and obviously what those two do will determine who's going to be the player of the tournament. But I still say Griezmann has, has been the outstanding figure. Um, in, in what he's contributed every game to France. Yes, yeah, so you're talking about perhaps if, if Argentina win, Lionel Messi finally winning the World Cup, um, yeah. would that make him the the undisputed greatest ever, Neil? And you're also talking about you know Mbappe there at 23. If France mm -hmm. win it, he'll have had, he'll be 23 with two World I've, I've, Cups. I, 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 I can't remember enjoying so many games, if I'm honest. Yeah, me too. As in a competition, that this yeah. one, I. I I, from a manager's point of view, Griezmann would be top of my list because he does it defensively, he does it attacking, he does he does the dirty hard work. Which, you know, you Sam knows we've had players at every club that we know is going to get seven, eight out of ten every week, and they're on your team sheet first. He's the first on the team sheet. But I have to say, when I have watched Messi this time, I've seen a different Messi. Yeah, yeah, I know the first game. But it, it were more or less well. We'll get. We'll be all right here. But when I look at Messi, I watched him with William, my lad, in that in that the, the, the previous game, and I said to William, "Well, just watch him when the camera pans, and he walks there, then he walks there, then he walks there." Mm -hmm. But I'm looking at him, and I'm, do you know he's walking with a method, Natalie? He's walking to find space. Mm -hmm. Now, when I were a kid, I used to think Bobby Chart were idle. I thought Bobby Chark was born idle, he never ran. He didn't run because 
he made space to get the ball and and that was the art and Messi is just the same he walks to get the space but he's changed games he's won games he's the world class I have never seen anybody in such quality of opposition do things what he's done in this World Cup so I tipped Argentina to start with and when they lost the first game I thought bloody hell everybody said oh you, you should yeah. have you should have said Brazil I tipped France yeah Really? So one of us, Natalie, is going to win. Are you sticking with Argentina? Of course I am. Are you sticking with France? Of course I am. You know yeah. why? I said it from the start. Best manager. Best manager. Mm. Right. I'm um, going to finish off, as we always like to, by just asking for a prediction for the World Cup final. So just one thing that you think is going to happen. Um, it can be the score. It can be a score. Obviously, I would say... Who's Messi's going to, going to be man of the match. Messi to be man of the match. Okay. And one I think it. I think it'll be somebody that we haven't thought about who scores the winner. Okay. I think it'll be either a fullback or a defender or a centre half header or set some, piece. Yeah, something, something that, that we haven't thought about, and it might. I think it's everything's geared to be a fantastic final. So don't 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 worry, don't be surprised if it's a nightmare, if it's a horrible, boring game. Because if Argentina, you know, they they can be, you know, if if Messi's not there, they can be horrible. A bit like Uruguay. Horrible to play against, and France have got that many people out. You know, if if Mbappe doesn't do well, so it might not be a classic. Right, Sam, thank you. It's been a joy oh, no these pleasure. last yeah. seven, eight weeks. Well, we might see each other in the new year. You never know. Well, we the do. bit of luck, fingers we crossed. We do hope so very much. And um, Neil, thanks, yeah, thanks, much. thanks, Sam. Thank and you, journey. Neil, and thank you all for joining us on another episode of No Tippy Tappy Football, brought to you by William Hill. We do hope you have enjoyed our series, and it's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. 